Hi and welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual UK and American citizen and today we're digging deep into the differences between figure skating in the UK and the US. You never really know what you're going to get on this channel, but inspired by Dancing on Ice starting in the UK in a couple of weeks, I thought we could see what we could find out about the sport in both countries and as usual it's far more fascinating than it appears on the surface. So if you're interested in things you never thought you needed to know, like why skating with celebrity shows are huge hits in the UK and massive failures in the US, or learning what skating move has a really cutesy name in the UK, but a weirdly violent name in the US, then stay tuned. Okay, so often one of the first differences we find is differences in language, and it's no different in figure skating. So our first difference has to do with some differences when it comes to the names of skating skills in both countries. Now, the first one is this jump. It's one of the first ones a skater learns, and in the US it's called a waltz jump, while in the UK it's called a three jump. The next is this move, which is called a shoot the duck in the US and a teapot in the UK. This is honestly the one that makes me laugh the most because the UK one is so very stereotypically British, like it has to do with tea, while the US one is all about like hunting or something. Like imagine being in the US and there's a group of like four year old kids learning how to skate and they're all being told to shoot the duck. And is it because the shape of your body is means that you are the duck or are you like shooting the duck with your blade? I don't know, what is even, why? What is even going on? Another interesting one is this move called a lunge in the US and a drag in the UK. So the US went for what the front leg is doing, which is lunging, while the UK went with what the back leg is doing, which is dragging. And this move, it's one of the very first things you learn to do in learning to skate. This movement is called a swizzle in the US and it's called a lemon in the UK. So the lemon one makes sense to me because you're making the shape of a lemon on the ice, but I couldn't find a reasoning for swizzle. It just is one of those things. Now these skating skills are um, more beginner skills, so when it comes to what you'll see in the Olympics, the names of the jumps and many of the spins are the same between both countries, but one interesting thing to note is that there is a jump which in the UK is typically pronounced Salco, but in the US is typically pronounced Salcow. So if you do listen to figure skating commentary when it comes to the Olympics or a world championships or something, listen out if you have a British person commenting or an American commenting because they might pronounce this one slightly differently. Now, the next difference is the number of rinks in each country because in order to figure skate, you need an ice skating rink. You can't just do it in the backyard unless you create a backyard figure skating rink or unless you live in a house in a program I watched on TV when I must have been like 12. I think it was called Monster House. Americans comment below, do you remember? And they built a skating rink in the living room. So unless that is your house, um, you're gonna need to go to an ice rink. So how many can you find in each country? Across the whole of the UK, there are about 50 ice rinks. This does depend on like seasonality. Obviously there's like pop-up ones in the winter, um, but around 50. In the USA, there are around 2,400. Again, plus or minus some seasonal rinks. Um, but the USA is 40 times bigger than the UK, so it actually means that the number of rinks compared to the size of the countries is roughly similar. Moving on, let's talk about competitiveness and funding in figure skating. At the end of the video, we'll talk about the history of the growth and competitiveness of the sport, but let's talk about the here and now because the objective truth is that currently Americans are more competitive on the world stage than the British. The most notable British figure skaters internationally right now are Lila Fear and Lewis Gibson. They're an ice dance team who are holding their own. They finished in second place in the European 2023 Championships, but looking at the results for the 2023 World Figure Skating Championships, we see an American on the podium in men's, pairs, and ice dance with the British skaters not meddling at all. In fact, if we look further into each discipline to see the gap, 
In the men's, the USA has a third place, a fifth place, and a 21st place finish, while the British did not advance to the final round of 24 skaters. In women's, the USA did not medal, but they did have a fourth place, 12th place, and 15th place finish, while the British did not advance to the final round of 24 skaters. In pairs, the US has a second place, fifth place, and 12th place finish, while the Brits had one team finish 16th and one team not advance to the finals. And finally, in ice dance, the USA took their first place finish, as well as a sixth and a tenth, while the Brits had their strongest showing here at fourth place. Again, this is Lila and Lewis, but they only sent one team that was competitive. This is not to put down the British competitive skaters, because often in sports, the success of a country's athletes has as much to do with individual talent as it does the infrastructure and funding that goes into the sport to develop that talent. To get to the highest levels, you need world-class coaches, a lot of money for all that coaching, ice time, skates, travel, etc. Just a lot of resources. And the closest figures I could find for the amount of funding um, in the US and UK is that the UK currently has an investment of 1.6 million pounds uh, for the 2022 to 2026 Olympic cycle. So that's for all four years. Um, this is around 2 million US dollars. US figure skating, on the other hand, spent $14.5 million in just one year back in 2018 times that by four, and you can see that uh, US figure skating has a lot more investment than British figure skating. And the problem is that the higher athletes rank on a world stage, the more funding they typically get from federations, but in order to perform well on those stages, they often need the types of training, coaches, and resourcing that they can't have without the funding. But let's talk about general figure skating viewership. Who is the audience? In both countries, figure skating is very much considered an Olympic sport or the once every four years kind of sport for most people. The chance of running into someone who actively follows it besides the Olympics is rare unless you're at an ice rink, but studies did show that even Olympic audiences for figure skating are higher in the US than in the UK. According to a YouGov poll, 53% of women and 29% of men followed Olympic figure skating in the US, while in the UK, only 36% of females and 10% of males were interested in Olympic figure skating. Skating in general is more commonly followed during the Olympics in the US than the UK, with even a sport like speed skating having about 30% of women and 35% of men watching, with only 16% of the UK interested. This can, of course, probably also be linked back to the similar vicious cycle um, as we saw with the funding. The US often has multiple Olympic contenders in figure skating, so obviously more Americans are going to want to watch. The more that watch, the more people become interested in the sport, and the more popular it becomes in a country, and the more talent you can find and produce, the more funding that can go into it, and the more people watch, and so on and so forth. But there's one area of skating that the British population love a lot more than Americans. As I talked about at the start of the video, Dancing on Ice is a huge hit in the United Kingdom, about to enter its 16th season in January of 2024. The concept of the show is pretty simple. You pair up a celebrity contestant with a professional skater, have them learn how to perform a skating routine, and then have a panel of judges, and finally the British audience vote on who wins. With 16 seasons, it's pretty obvious that the British public do like the show, um, and it does focus mostly on learning like tricks rather than really learning how to skate, but it's flashy, it brings out tons of crowds to the ice rink every winter, and we're going to deem it a hit. Compare this with the two tries the US has given with this same style of show. The first was skating with celebrities in 2006, and the second was skating with stars in 2010. Um, neither made it past one season. Skating with celebrities was completely overtaken by controversy over an affair that the main couple who won were having during the show, resulting in divorces and then their marriage, which probably makes for like good reality TV, but it's not the type of reality TV they were going for, so that was scrapped. Then the next one, Skating with the Stars, had no real controversy besides people were like, wait, what show? I haven't heard of it. And who's on it? And is that person really a celebrity? Because I've never heard of them. 
In multiple articles talking about how much of a fail this show was, there is one consistent theme and that the US show failed to get celebrities to participate who anybody really knew or were interested in, and American audiences in particular seem to really need that pull to a show. It can be that they want to hate watch, but they still need some name recognition, and a bunch of D and E list celebrities learning how to skate badly just did not appeal. The other hypothesis was that many of the British viewers would have been familiar with ice skating disciplines involving partnered skatings, thanks to the success of Torval and Dean, but American audiences were typically more familiar with single skating and were wanting more of the massive jumps and single skating element that didn't work in that show. So despite the success of shows like Dancing with the Stars in the US, the skating version never took off and no network has taken the chance on trying it again since 2010. Our final compare and contrast has to do with the decline of figure skating in both countries. Unfortunately for fans, one of the things that is similar between the UK and US is that both countries had a peak in figure skating and are now in a slump or general decline for various reasons. However, what this looks like for each country is different. So to start with the UK, as bluntly stated in this article um, in The Guardian in 2014, Britain used to be good at figure skating. In fact, a Londoner won gold in the first Olympic women's single figure skating event in 1908, and male skaters like John Curry and Robin Cousins took gold in the Olympics in 1976 and 1980, then, of course, there are icons like Torval and Dean, who won gold in 1984 in Sarajevo. Then, nothing really since then. Success in sports can go in cycles, but that cycle hasn't happened again in the UK, and again, the experts consider the lack of funding to be a main problem. While British ice skating do have funding for this current Olympic cycle, that was pretty big news. They haven't had this in past cycles. And in past years, this has really shown. Often a figure skater in the UK may win the national title within the UK, essentially being the best of the best within the country, but they still don't have enough of a score to qualify for the world championships. And again, this isn't about the skaters themselves, but what this tells us about the country as a whole and the skating federation and available resources and encouragement for those wanting to develop their skills at the top levels. In the US, the absolute peak of figure skating came a decade later than the UK. The 90s were a time of American dominance. This was a golden age of Michelle Kwan and Christy Yamaguchi and professional skating tours that went around the country with huge crowds. Of course, skating had been popular in the US before that. You had Peggy Fleming, Dorothy Hamill, Scott Hamilton, and others. But the 90s were when skating really became a cultural phenomenon and one of America's favorite sports. Unfortunately, as talked about in this article in 2021, figure skating is also on the decline in the US. This doesn't mean that the US doesn't still experience success in the sport. Male US figure skater Nathan Chen won gold in 2022, but the figure skating mania has died down. One reason was the financial crash in 2008. It just made it incredibly hard for many families to afford an expensive sport like skating. Um, and also Michelle Kwan retired in 2006 and it did do great things for American placements on the podium for a while, so viewership of the sport declines. Today, figure skating shows in the US do exist, but they aren't attended or talked about like the ones in the 90s, and many figure skaters who performed during those days express feeling sorry for the current group of skaters who won't get to experience what it was like to be surrounded by such crowds cheering you on on a skating tour. So will there be another golden age of skating in either country, or will it remain a niche sport with once every four year fans? I'd love to hear your thoughts on figure skating and what you've experienced in either country. Did you watch Torval and Dean win in 1984? Do you remember watching Michelle Kwan compete in the 90s? Do you watch Dancing on Ice? And when is the last time that you went to a skating rink? Leave that all in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.